Hi everybody, and thanks for viewing this YouTube fly tying tutorial on Saddle Hackle. One of the most common topics that I get asked in regards to my YouTube fly tying channel typically will center around hackle, and it's no wonder. For the beginning to intermediate fly tire, the entire process of selecting hackle to purchase can be a little bit stressful and overwhelming. There are a lot of choices out there, and I wanted to create this video to basically help narrow those for you. Some common questions that I get asked include, what are differences between necks and saddles? What are some colors that I recommend? And finally, where are some places where I can purchase them? I hope to answer those questions and more during this tutorial. For starters though, I want, really want to stress that this is going to be related to saddle hackle. Basically, hackle that's used to tie dry flies to woolly buggers, sizes 22 down to size 4. Basically, hackle that's used to be wrapped around a hook, or some type of an anchor point, such as a post. Now with all that said, the question is going to be, why saddle hackle? Whenever I recommend hackles to others, it really can vary depending on the type of tire that that individual is. Though whenever it comes to my personal tying, I really love saddle hackle. In fact, the other day when I was preparing for this video, I was pulling out different saddles, and I wanted to just show a few of my favorites. And I just kept pulling them out, one after another, and pretty soon I had a stack of my favorites and um, it was a little overwhelming for me to even look through this stack and say geez there's just way too many to share. I'm embarrassed to say that this is not my entire collection. That's just a small portion of my saddle collection. I really don't know what the actual number is and I'd be a little shy to, to share that because I really would hate for my wife to hear it and then finally say Tim no more hackle because I'm constantly bringing home new saddles and necks. I love both of them. I think they both have their place in fly tying, though I tend to gravitate more towards saddle hackle, and I'll explain why in this video. I still have the very first saddle that I purchased from a sporting goods store in western Pennsylvania over 20 years ago. Kind of a brownish dun that I've used to tie lots of parachutes over the years. And the great part about this little piece was that there's just so many other possibilities and so many other tying materials on it that I've also used. Probably wasn't the best saddle, probably still isn't the best saddle, but was my first one I still have it and I still will use some of those those feathers on a regular basis. During this YouTube fly tying tutorial what I'd like to do is give you a brief overview on saddle hackle. Next give you four tips that I use whenever I'm purchasing them. I'm going to then change the camera angle give you a close-up on some of these saddles not all of them I promise but give you a close-up and just talk to you a little bit about some defining characteristics and then to conclude the video I'm going to give you my color recommendations and a few places that I can kind of refer you to if you'd like to purchase them in the future. During this portion of the video, I'm going to give you an overview on saddle hackle and then illustrate the differences between saddles and necks. For starters, if you're able to, Google an image of a chicken, hopefully with lots of feathers. If you look at the neck section of the chicken on its back, that's where you'll find the neck or the cape. If you've heard those two words before and you're not sure of the differences, don't worry about it. There are none. In the world of fly tying, those words are used interchangeably. As you go further down that chicken's back, you'll eventually see a section of feathers that almost waterfall off one side or both. That's the saddle section. And I believe they're called saddles simply because they kind of resemble that waterfall cascading saddle look like you would use on a horse. Now, from what I understand, those are the two best regions on a chicken to use for dry fly feathers. Why? I don't know about the specifics, but what I'm going to do in the description of this video, I'm going to provide a link to a great article that I found on clearwaterhackle.com, and all those differences and those technicalities can be explained there. Now, let's go into talking about those necks versus the saddles. For starters, whenever I have beginning fly tires that ask me for a recommendation for one versus the other, I typically will say buy a really nice quality neck first in one or two colors. The reason is simple. The neck can just afford you just a wide variety of sizes to tie from. I have some necks that will tie as large as a size 6 the whole way down to a size 26 depending on the quality. That's great for a beginning tire who wants to be able to pull from these feathers on an everyday basis. Whenever I really do examine those, those two, the saddles and the necks, I find that there are two main differences that draw me to saddles more often. For starters, whenever you look at the feathers on a saddle, they are so long. This one I just grabbed has, has saddle feathers that are 
over six inches in length. I love to tie parachute dry flies and I prefer saddles. And if I pull just one of these feathers, I can tie, I'm not even sure how many, dry flies from just one. The other defining characteristic of a saddle versus a neck or a cape is that saddles are tied for, or are basically used to tie a more specific size. On that saddle that I just held up, that's really used to tie size 16 and size 18 dry flies. There'll be a few feathers on that that will tie size 20s, a few that will tie size 14s, but for the most part it's in that 16 to 18 range. That's a good thing and that's a bad thing. I know that the majority of my flies that I tie with that color fall into 16s and 18s. So I have basically a plethora of feathers to pull from for who knows how many years. However, if I need to tie a size 12, it's probably not going to come from that. I tend to buy more saddles because I know what I tie more of, hence that's why I'm drawn to those. If you know what size you're going to be tying more often, you're probably going to be drawn to saddles as well. The other, um, we'll say, tip that I'd like you to know, whenever you're tying saddles or you're tying with saddles, what I found over the years is that most of the smaller ones are found more along the sides. When I hold it straight down on these two sides, I find more of my smaller hackles versus in the middle and near the top, that's where I find more of my larger hackles. So if you have a saddle, you may want to pull it out and just say, yeah, you know what, I was tying size 14s with this, but I realized there might be a couple size 12s, maybe even a size 10 up in that middle section before it turns into that schloppen style of feather. So those are some main differences between saddles and necks. And next I'm going to give you some tips that I use whenever I'm purchasing saddles. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the entire process of selecting and purchasing hackle can be really overwhelming and even stressful at times. Before I give you my four main tips for selecting hackle, what I want to stress is that whenever I'm talking about saddle hackle, I'm talking about purchasing an entire saddle. That may or may not include the schloppen, like some providers just throw in as a bonus, but I'm not talking about those 100 packs or those quarter saddles or the bugger packs. Those definitely have their place in fly tying, and I have a few of them. However, whenever I think about fly tires, we're talking about really creative individuals that are able to look at a saddle and say, geez, I know what I can tie with these over here, these hackles. I think there's going to be some great woolly buggers that will come from these schloppen. And whenever I look at this marabou, I know where I can place that on a few streamers. I believe that the entire notion of purchasing an entire saddle just is a better thing. And that's what I'm going to encourage all of you to do. And that's where my tips are going to come from. So with that said, let me go over my tips that I have for you. Tip number one is know what sizes you're going to be tying. Because saddle hackles can just be so specific with certain sizes, you really have to be aware of what size flies you're going to be fishing on a regular basis. You may want to even look through your dry fly boxes and say, you know what, the majority of flies that I've used over this last season have been sizes 14, 16, and 18. Thus, you have a great starting point. A friend of mine used to brag about a dry fly neck that, that he had that was able to tie size 32s. This individual, however, never tied or fished size 32 flies. It was great bragging, but you don't want to be that guy. Instead, focus on your everyday tying and fishing and purchase accordingly. My second tip, if at all possible, get that saddle hackle in your hands so you can examine it. If you can get to a local fly shop, that's where I'm going to encourage you to start. And whenever you get there, don't just pull that first, that first saddle off the rack. Whenever I purchase a saddle of a certain color, I'll pull every color off the rack and begin to examine and note their differences. Even if they're all marked number two grade, more than likely there's going to be differences from one to another. The best way for you to figure that out is to get them in your hand and look through some of those characteristics that I'm going to be talking about here in a little bit. If you can't get to a fly shop, then I'm going to encourage you to go to one of the yearly fly shows. My Uncle John and I love traveling to the Somerset, New Jersey fly fishing show on a yearly basis. And more than likely, each of us is going to come out of there with a bunch of necks and saddles. There's a great selection and a great variety at those fly fishing shows. Now, if you can't get to a fly fishing show or a fly shop, my third recommendation would be to try calling one of these hackle providers and see if they'll consider sending you a few of a set saddle. That way, you'll have the opportunity to get them in your hands and then send back the ones that you don't want. Instead, just pay for those that you do. 
Now, please don't drop my name and said that and, and tell all these people that that I said that they're going to do that. They may or may not, but it, it's definitely worth a shot to ask. And if they say no, what you have to do is be very clear and specific with them about what you want that saddle to do. Tell them what sizes you're looking for and what flies and patterns you're going to be tying with that saddle. And more than likely, if you're very clear about those expectations that you have for that saddle, they're going to be able to match you up with something accordingly. My third tip is one that really just relates to fly tying and fly fishing in general, and that's that you get what you pay for. Whenever we're talking about the world of fly fishing, dry fly fishing is that top tier, and these saddle hackles relate to that top tier. And it seems like most things in that top tier just cost a little bit more money. So whenever you get to a fly shop or a show and you're looking at these different hackles, and they look pretty much the same to you, yet one is marked twice as much as the other, there's probably a reason why. I can guarantee you with these individuals that I'm going to recommend, they're looking at every single saddle, they're figuring out how many barbels are on them, and they're determining which is a greater quality than the other, and they're pricing them accordingly. So understand that if you want top quality hackle, it's going to cost a little bit more money than those at the other end of the spectrum. Back whenever I bought that first saddle, I really thought I was getting such a great deal. And maybe I got a good deal, but I didn't get a lot of hackle and it wasn't very stiff hackle. I paid for it and I basically got what I paid for. Related to that is my fourth tip. And that's if possible, split the hackle with a friend, literally. If one of my friends called me up and said, hey Tim, I have this just beautiful um, barred done uh, saddle that is $70, we'll split it in half, it'll cost each of us $35, are you interested? I'm going to say absolutely because my friend did all the legwork for me and they're going to split it. They're probably going to get the better half of that split, but it's going to work out. So if you have a, a friend in fly tying and they're interested in going, going in on a saddle with you, purchase that saddle. Once you get it, find the middle point on the back, mark it with a sharpie, and then cut it with a razor blade. Don't use scissors. You'll lose a lot of those hackles. Once you have it cut, look over each area and either flip a coin or because you did the legwork, you can keep the area that, that side that you think is the best. But what's great about that is that it's going to reduce the cost. <coughs> Excuse me. I apologize. And it's going to give you the opportunity to purchase more hackle and get more of a variety of colors. So if that opportunity exists, go for it. If there's not a, a fly tying friend in your area, you could always make a post on one of the fly tying forums, but just make sure if somebody does answer that post that it's a reputable individual and you're going to be giving, give, uh, getting your money back, not just giving away some of that nice hackle. So with that said, I'm going to change the camera angle here and we're going to go over some of those defining characteristics of saddles. Okay, it's time to examine these saddles a little closer. I've already explained that once I initially take a saddle out of the package, I turn it upside down and see how all the feathers fall. If I like what I'm seeing, and what I mean by that is if they have a nice length and they're evenly distributed, what I next do is place them flat and separate them into three sections. Section one, section two, and section three. Then I go through each section and I figure out approximately what size the majority of those feathers will tie. Once I figure that out, I determine if they're going to meet my needs. In this case, and this is a, a barred light done, I was able to quickly determine that this section and this front section would tie smaller flies and this middle section tied about one size to two sizes larger. I quickly realized that this was going to meet a few different sizes, which is why I purchased it. After looking over the, the saddle for sizes, I next wanted to check out the stems. I wanted to make sure that the stems were thin stems. This was an easy one to do because the stems were a little darker. So I was quickly able to look down some of the stems and determine exactly how thick that stem was. And I can compare it to other saddles that, I, that were at this shop. I prefer those with thin stems because I know they're going to wrap around the hook or wrap around the post a lot easier. And then the final key piece that I was looking for were the number of barbels per feather. Now I'm not going to count them, I didn't have an official counter or anything, but I was able to just quickly bend these and examine how many barbels there were. I could do that in each of these three sections and I could tell immediately if I thought there were going to be an ample amount to support a dry fly or not. 
though I love to fish parachute style flies, I also want to be able to tie catskill flies too. And I quickly determined that I would be able to with this hackle. Now there's another piece that you could examine and that's going to be if you have on both sides of the stem hackle fibers that are that consistent length. For the majority of hackle that we purchase today, they are. That's not something that you really see too often anymore, at least from the hackle that I'm seeing. But you just want to make sure that the hackle on one side is the same as the other side. You can quickly figure that out just by pushing them in the opposite direction than just examining their length. And then finally, a piece that sometimes gets forgotten is to look on the back side of the feather to make sure that the color variation between the front and the back isn't too off. In some cases, there will be a drastic difference, and you have to keep that in mind depending on the style fly that you're tying. I'm going to show you two additional saddles. This next saddle is a Badger. This is from Clearwater Hackle. I want you to notice a few things about this Badger. For starters, what drew me to it was whenever I was looking at a lot of these feathers and a lot of the badger feathers, they had a very slender line. I have some badgers that have a very thick line in the center, but in this case you can see they had really nice even tips on both sides and a very slender line down the center that I thought would make for a great thorax profile. The other piece that I want to point out in regards to clear water hackle is the fact that with their hackle they also include this piece up here. There's a lot of translucent colors in this piece right now. I'm not sure if they're showing up on the camera. But what this piece is, is a piece of schloppen. This piece is typically cut off depending on who you buy your hackle from. But they include it as kind of a bonus for you with their saddles. Schloppen is great. I use it on a lot of my, um, my woolly buggers and a lot of streamer patterns. If you look on this back, you can also see a lot of feathers with marabou on them that you can use on additional patterns. So that's something else to keep in mind whenever you're purchasing a, purchasing a saddle. Don't just focus on those, those initial fibers and those initial feathers. You want to see what other feathers are offered on that piece. And then finally, here's a grizzly hackle. And this is from Collins Hackle. Now what's unique about this one, th there was a couple things that drew me to it. For starters, whenever I did the separation, I had a lot, of, a, a lot of ranges of sizes with this one. With this piece, I had some smaller hackle over here, smaller to almost medium in this piece, and then larger sizes up here. But what I loved about these larger sizes were that they were very buggy, almost that schloppen style of hackle. I really love that schloppen style of hackle, that buggier hackle whenever I tie smaller woolly buggers. And I knew this would be a perfect section for it here. The other piece that always draws me to these grizzly hackles is the fact that sometimes if you're lucky enough, you'll get some of this grizzly marabou on it. If you price this grizzly marabou, you'll know, like me, that this stuff is not cheap anymore. And it's great to see that, hey, I have a bunch on just this one saddle that I can pull from if I need them for other materials. So with that said, um, again, just to kind of briefly go over this, whenever I'm examining hackle, I like to look at it first upside down and see how everything falls and see the length of the different saddles. Next, I like to separate it. I determine the sizes. I check out the hackle from both sides. I examine the stem, the length of the hackle, how many barbules are on the hackle. If I'm comfortable with all that, it's going to be a saddle with a brand new home in my collection. That's a brief overview of a few of the characteristics that I look for when purchasing saddles. I'm going to rearrange this camera angle and conclude the video with some of my color recommendations, some places where you can purchase this, and then any final thoughts before I wrap everything up. And now to the portion of the video that you've been waiting for, my color recommendations. I've broken these colors into two tiers, with the understanding that if you're purchasing these colors new, you would first go through those colors in Tier 1 and next gradually work your way into Tier 2. My first choice in Tier 1 is an easy one and that's Grizzly. I find myself turning to Grizzly more and more often every year and that's because I've had so much success with it. We're talking even in patterns that it doesn't list Grizzly as the hackle in that original recipe. 
One of my early fly tying and fly fishing mentors used to tell me that every fly is an absolute effective one, as long as it has either a grizzly hackle or peacock curl in it. I've taken that statement to heart and believe you should too. The next color choice in this tier would be either a light or dark dun, preferably barred. Those two duns can match so many natural insects. And I believe that that barring, similar to the grizzly, gives that fly that proof of life that fish want to see. My third choice would be a barred ginger. In the second tier, I have three additional colors. The first that I recommend is either a brown or furnace, next black, and finally cream. With those six choices, I believe that you can accurately represent the majority of insects on your home waters. I'm next going to move into a few websites that you can purchase hackle from. You're going to notice that all three of these are smaller businesses, and that's because they're the businesses that I purchase my hackle from. That's not a knock against larger retailers or businesses. However, these are the three that I've had business with over the years, and they have excellent quality hackle. For starters, number one is clearwaterhackle.com. Their owner, Lars Benson, is extremely informative, as you can tell from the articles on his website. He's got a very historic line of chickens, and he's a great individual to reach out either by email or phone. Number two is collinshackle.com. Mr. Collins is an individual that my Uncle John and I love to talk to every year at the Somerset, New Jersey fly fishing show. If you ask him about a certain hackle, he's going to ask you in reply, what do you want to tie with it? And he does his best to pair you up with that hackle to meet your tying needs. Number three is Joel Alsdorf from alsdorfgenetic.com. Joel is in Northwest Pennsylvania, and he's kind of a newcomer in the world of hackle, yet you're going to be hearing his name more and more often. I suggest either calling or emailing Joel to find out more about his hackle. I've listed all three of those websites in the description of this YouTube fly tying tutorial, and I suggest you check them out along with any additional others that you're interested in. If there are any other hackle providers that you purchase from that you recommend, just leave them in the comments section of this video. Well, with that said, I really do hope that you enjoy this YouTube fly tying tutorial on saddle hackle. If you'd like to watch more of my videos, I encourage you to visit my website at www.troutandfeather.com. With that said, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them directly on this YouTube page, or as always, you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. Thanks everyone for viewing this YouTube fly tying tutorial.